Hey guys, David here. Uh, we're just catching up with Sanford Building. He's a outer suburb Melbourne builder. Absolute legend, man. It was pretty cool to see how he has built his business into what he's doing now. Smaller building company, team of two or three. Um, but yeah, it was cool just to understand a different story from a builder going from working for a boss, managing the sales, quoting, winning business process, um, dealing with all the ups and downs. So yeah, he put a um, quote from him, I've just been bought, building small buzzy shit and now he's building million dollar passive home houses in the outer suburbs of Melbourne. So we spoke about how competitive the market is out there, if he competes with other builders, how he prices for his builders, um, what type of contracts he does as well. So. Yeah, it was just cool to see, um, you know, another guy was doing his apprenticeship, um, managed to find a couple clients that were giving him good, you know, extra weekend work. His boss at the time only had four days work a week, so he was going and doing three days for this other guy. Um, loves his family, got a newborn on the way, wants to try and tailor off building where he can and let, you know, one of his foremen step up and make more money. So, yeah, another interesting background from a busy builder. Um, if you're a busy builder and you're pricing smaller jobs and you want help moving into the bigger lane, here at Rapid QS we'll do everything from pricing off plans, dealing with the clients for you, helping with um, your price packages, putting together your tender packs. But realistically, we are um, the best and the fastest at pre-construction estimating and helping you guys win more projects. So we'll drop our email below, listen to this podcast, let us know your thoughts. about to you in regards oh so i live here oh fuck yeah and then i've got a job here shit man and the other one's here <laughs> how many k's do you do a week i got a That's new a car lot. yeah at, like in the middle of the year and i've got seventeen thousand k's on it fuck already <laughs> shit loads of k's yeah but it, like i didn't really plan to have two jobs like so far away from each other yeah man just like one got heavily delayed and now they've just like ended up being mm. yeah at the same fucking time it's a yeah. nightmare mm. whereas like normally i'm happy to travel to one and then have something else yeah, like, yeah. fucking closer can i drink that yeah take that bro it's all yours man um so how do you for in regards to leads and jobs you take on and all that jazz how do you target that or you kind of were these just word of mouth ones that were yeah, it's always been my goal. <laughs> it's always been my goal to be a myth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like and just yeah, like I don't market myself nice fucking at all. Yeah. Like this is the first time I've had a car with branding on it. No shit. Same like my jobs, no yeah. one's driving past them. Yeah. Like they're literally both dead end roads. <laughs> like and at the end of dead end roads. Bro, well, it's how many how many years have you had the business? So I was a carpenter for Oh sick, bro. Like fucking six yeah yeah six years nice and then, bro. Yeah, then, yeah then got my builder's license yeah and um yeah so i've been building for three yeah, three yeah. years yeah nice yeah so yeah. you've never had a lull in those three years that's pretty good if you haven't marketed though like fuck, that's yeah good, like why well, as a carpenter i was doing a lot of work for a developer yeah and like there's a street in northcote like mm. not far from well, like not far out, like 15 minutes out of the city. Yeah. And I've done like five in the same street. Yeah. Yeah. And so I pretty much just like worked, not exclusively for them, but like. Yeah. They've given you a good flow of work the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, like I just run a pretty lean ship. So. Man. Sort of happy to not do yeah. many things. Yeah, yeah. And then like the Little River job I've got, mm. like the client's worth squillions. And um, how'd you mean it? How'd you get his job? I was doing a heap of work. I did heaps of random stuff, like just fun <laughs> shit. That's good though, man. So I did a factory fit out for a panel beater, mm. like a builder that I was working for owns this factory. Yeah. And so I went there to like build a couple of partition walls or whatever. And I hit it off with the panel beater and he's like, oh, do you reckon you can, you know, do Maybe. this and this and this. And then next minute I spent like 12 months there. <laughs> And he raced sprint cars and we built this like sick ass fucking display room for his sprint cars. Yeah. Like a sick paint booth. Yeah, mate. Like just, he just kept going like. Yeah. He fucked off on holidays once and came back and he's like, man, the Airbnb had this fucking sick ceiling. Do you reckon we can do that? I was like, yeah, fucking sent it. Just ripped the fucking ceiling out. Gangster, this man. Sick. So we just done so much grouse shit with him. And as all he does is like restore. Yeah. Like old super old classics, like fucking. Man. Legit shit and yeah. so this little river client was one of his clients mean and he's like hey i heard you're a good builder do you want to take this job on 
Yeah. I was like, yep. Word of mouth, but this is the best business you can yeah. get. There. And yeah. And he was chill. Like, I mean, I went down to have a look at this job. It's like an 1860 stone cottage. Yeah. Joint's fucked. Yeah. He bought it for his daughter because she wanted to live somewhere off grid. Yeah. And they started renovating, lost interest and legged it. Man. And just left it there getting trashed for just fucking three beat years. Beat up and not look after. I just want to have, did you put any photos of this on your Instagram? Oh, there's not many of the Little River job, but. No, um, it's just cool. Like, you've, I mean, I'm just baffled. Like, you've done pretty well with, like, you know, not much marketing. Your Instagram's good. Do you get a lot of work directly through your Instagram? Zero. Zero. Just that's a, all that's just fucking, the flings, man. <laughs> oh, it's just fucking builders, man. Just yeah. networking, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, but I went down there and had a look at the job, and I was like, listen, man, it's going to be fucking hard to price. Like, yeah. it's so fucked. I'm like, I'm going to have to get trades down to look at it to and quote like, work out a fucking scope of works. Yeah. And on the drive home, he, he drove me down there. He's like... He goes, so how do we get this job happen? I'm like, yeah, like I said, you know, like this yeah, is what's going to have to be the process. Yeah. And he goes, mate, just do the fucking job, send me the bill. Mate, that's like, a dream client. <laughs> I was like, fucking sweet. Yeah. And then we started and the joint was fucked and I ring him. I'm like, Richard, I'm going to have to knock this down. Yeah. And he goes, Brad, don't stress me with this shit. He goes, just go your hardest, send me the bill. Yeah. I was like, I go, I'm going to need an excavator. He goes, I'll sort it. I was like, cool. And then he rings me, he goes, listen, I can't be fucked hiring one. Yeah. I've bought one. But oh it'll just get God, dropped bro. off. Drops off a brand new five ton Kubota. To use for what, a Fucking day? <laughs> no, nah, like we've used it heaps. He's got. Oh, but how long did that job take to, you know, demo that thing down? Oh, no, fuck all. A couple yeah. of days. <laughs> he's like, oh, it'll come in handy for something. Yeah. But he's got. So that property is 120 acres. Yeah, mean. Then he lives on another property that's 100 acres. Mean. Then he's got two properties on the river, yeah. on the Murray River up in Korowa, that are both on acreage. Gangster. And he's like, yeah. Just endless shit for you to do. Yeah, it's just a fucking That's legend. Because so, I, I suppose um, the thing I love, I look at what we, um, the reason why I wanted to do all this stuff is it's real interesting because a lot of the questions we get from people is literally like, how do you get a flow of work? How do you price shit? Yeah. How do you deal with problems like wins, yeah. losses? That's why it's real, real yeah. interesting, you know? I've had a whole string of clients, and this is all just word of mouth shit, yeah. that I have not priced a fucking thing. I just yeah. rip in and give a bill and yeah. just fucking pay it. That's mean. Yeah. So I'm as going And that away. started from like as a third year apprentice. Yeah. I was doing a bit of work. One of my mates was a commercial chippy. Yeah. And my boss just refused, flat out refused to work Fridays. Mm. So we were only doing four days a week. Oh, so you had three days. So I had three days. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, I'm an apprentice, broke as shit. Mm. I'm going to work these other days. Yeah. Seriously. Because I started my apprenticeship a bit later. I started at like 23. Yeah. I would go Fridays and Saturdays and work with my mate. And we yeah. did this redevelopment at the zoo. Were you just working for cash then? Uh, yeah, he just yeah. gave me cash, yeah. Man. Yeah, and um, yeah, through that, like, one of the site supers was like, oh, I've got this side job <laughs> in Middle Park, which is like a real ritzy suburb, like where they have the Grand Prix. Yeah, nice. And he's like, can you come and work there? And I was like, yeah. So I went and started working there, and it took about four days of me working there, and the owner's like, listen, <laughs> I'm going to fuck all these other guys off. Just you do it. Sick. And I was like, Fucking okay. <laughs> it was like four and a half million dollar like Man. heritage joint in fucking Middle Park and he's just like Yeah, rip into it. Go for it. What'd you do for your Monday to Thursday job? I, I still just stayed doing, oh, doing and then what you I was did doing. this two, yeah. two to three days on, on the site. Yeah. And then Sick. and then he fucking he ended up selling that house. Yeah. And bought another one. He just used to love buying like old fucking and he so he had one like fucking right around the corner from here, which Man. was the original Cobb and Co head office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then some like fucking wanky doctor in the seventies had bought it and renovated it. it. Was like Austin Powers shit. It was fucking wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I spent ages working there. That was when I was like out on my own. Yeah. But I was doing all his shit at night. How how old would you have been now? Like 20, 25, 26? Started your apprenticeship at twenty three. Yeah. Maybe? So late twenty. Yeah, I went out on my own at twenty six. Yeah, mean. Yeah, 26. And so I would have been doing work for this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I would have been like 25, 26, 27. Mean. And um, he was real high up at Macquarie Bank. Yeah. And so he fucked like the business side of things and like, because yeah. straight up he's like, I'm going to pay you this much. Yeah. And like jacked up my hourly rate by no like way. 15 bucks an hour like that. How? Yeah. Because I had no idea what I was worth. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, listen, this is what I'm paying all these other people. Yeah. Who are, are not to as be. good as you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'll pay you what I'm paying them. Yeah, man. I, I was like, and compared to what you were making as a yeah, manager, I was like, like fucking <laughs> right on. Yeah. <laughs> So, so he how, was paying me 50 bucks an hour cash. <laughs> Not through the books. No. Nah, so That's I was legit. making 
working a Friday and Saturday mm. double mm. what my fucking weekly wage was. That's nuts, bro. Yeah. But you needed sick. to yeah. finish it just to get it signed off and get it done, yeah? For your main What's boss, that? your apprenticeship. Yeah, which yeah. I'm still really, really good mates with. Me? My old boss, like best mates. Yeah. Did yeah. he know you were doing all this stuff this yeah. day Friday? Yeah, he frothed it. He fuck, his phone went off the hook. Yeah. What the fuck do I do here? Yeah. yeah. I remember the first, like for this guy, he's like, oh, can you put this um, half in? Yeah. And I was like, what the fucking hell's a half? Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm asking like, the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, it's like just the stone at the bottom of the fireplace. Oh, okay, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. The fireplace is Which, like, yeah, yeah, makes sense, but I had no idea what a fucking half was. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. what? And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I, I fucking guess so. Yeah. And I was like, man, this house was like fucking 150 years old. And I'm yeah. like, fuck. So I just used to blow up my old boss. Yeah, yeah. How do I, I like, do this? Yeah, he didn't give a fuck. He was like, yeah, sweet. Man. Rock on. Fuck, so have you ever put a fixed price in on something? Yeah. Because obviously we're QSs. People love knowing yeah. about pricing and shit. Yeah. Yeah? What have you priced and how, how, how have you done it? Have you fucked something up? Have you lost money on jobs? I've been really lucky. Yeah. So, like, I've got a fixed price contract now on yep. the Hempcrete house, yep. the Castle Main job. Um, and I just, like, started pricing it. And so, like, there's a handful of, like, I guess, like, the passive house builders in Melbourne that are, like, real clicky. Mm. Not clicky. Yeah. Like, just, we're all fucking real good mates, like, yep. super supportive or whatever. Mean. And so, I was like, fuck. I, I'm like, I've got no idea how to price shit. I'm yeah. just fucking, like. Send it usually, like yeah, whatever. Yeah. Chuck a price in and have a, have a... Yeah. And so um, Hamish from Sanctum Homes like fucking heavily mentored me through pricing it. That's good, man. You know, and he's like, yeah. And then like another mate of mine, Alistair, yep. same. Like they were just like, nah, you got to do this. You got to do that. Yep, like yep. sent me overhead calculators. And, and that yep. was like my first fucking dive into it. Yeah. You know, like when I got my builder's license, I built a house for my parents, which is obviously just fucking... Yeah, cost plus. We'll just open send book, it, charge and, up, get it done. Well, yeah, it was like fucking the biggest yeah. love job ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah. And then obviously like I was pricing carpentry packages and stuff for, for, sure. for, for jobs. But then I just really got into doing like fucked up shit that like no people, one was doing. People wouldn't want to quote. That's mean, eh? Yeah. But isn't that and where like, you can... And like random ass shit, yeah? Yeah, like yeah. Every year I build a truck, like a race car truck for Porsche. <laughs> um like with this panel beater. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah. So just, I just like, feel, yeah. Just random shit. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know, man. I've got a mate like that back home. He'll um he'll deck out like vans and old buses and camper vans and yeah. shit. And I'm like, it's such buzzy shit. But I'm like, it takes so much extra craftsmanship to do that kind of yeah. stuff. I reckon it's cool, that. It's fucking fun ass. Like yeah. my old boss cracked shits with the building industry yeah, and yeah. fucking legged it. But he just was working for like really shit developers and yeah, stuff. Because yeah. he rips me, he's like, how are you still doing it? I'm like, bro, it's a different world. Like, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. doing custom homes for people that like yeah. come in every day and they like for almost want to suck your dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's their dream home. Yeah, they love it. They Whereas, get here. you know, when I worked for him and what mm. he was doing, mm. you're working for people that just cared about how fast you'll get it done, how cheap you'll get yeah, it done. Yeah, yeah, competitive market. Yeah. 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 Just so like, would, would, you, would you say the guy that gave you all that charge up stuff, that was just like your first break out of like a non-competitive market and he just liked you for you really? Yeah. Yeah. And you're yeah. a good builder. And then yeah. Just... And then that was it. He, he just was like happy to pay, just wanted a good job done. Mean. And so yeah. it was like a good relationship. And then it literally just fucking flowed. Keep going. And I've always just found people yeah. now that value what I do. That's so good, eh? And uh, thankfully most of them... Yeah. Uh, well off enough that yeah. they're just like, oh, they... well, it fucking costs what it costs. <laughs> so do you put an invoice, like a weekly invoice into this guy and he just pays it? Or is yeah, it like... so the one I'm doing for now, he'll yeah. harass me. Yeah, yeah, to get your invoices. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and even if like, you say it's like coming up the end of the quarter and I don't want to bill, yeah. I've got to send him a tally of what he's up to because his yeah. business is huge. Yeah. And so he's doing daily cash flow reports. Ah, yeah, yeah. I see. And so now he's just starting to yeah. want to teach me like all the nitty gritty business that's cool side of things yeah so yeah. how big is your building team at the moment no it's just two of us just two, you guys that's so it's just you and another guy yep what's the he just works for you directly yep. on wages yep and you just just go around and build yeah that's so good man yeah how'd you find him uh so just he hasn't mate. been this guy hasn't been with me for that long yeah um i just got rid of a guy at the end of the year who yeah. did like from 16 all the way through to like 22 whole yeah. apprenticeship yeah the works and it was just like time to yeah. part, part ways then move on um but the guy that i've got now yeah. the castle main job the hempcrete house yeah. 
he was just a laborer yeah. there helping do the form work. Mean. And when it finished, I was like, fuck, man, I could do it with an extra set of hands. And yeah. he's like, shit, yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I was like, sweet. And so he jumped on board. Sweet. And um, yeah, he had like next to no carpentry experience. Yeah. Like he had done like a bit of joinery and sort of that sort of stuff. Practical kind of minded. Though, yeah, yeah, he'd done a bit of labor and all yeah. that sort of shit. And he just like loved it, started like fucking buying loads of tools and shit. <laughs> I was like, do you want to stick around? He's like, yep. Yeah, fuck, I've got nothing else to do. I was like, fucking sweet. And me. he likes doing all the random shit that I like doing. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Whereas man. like the other dude I had, he sort of just wanted to be like, yeah. you know, really enjoyed the framing and that yeah. sort of stuff. Whereas like, I'm literally like, yeah. if it's with my hands, I'll do it. Happy to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just find it funny how you're getting new builds and all this crazy shit just off random shit. Like, is someone just saying, hey, this guy built this fucked up car thing and do you want yeah. to build my three million dollar house yeah. like <laughs> would you say the area where like you're living and building is there is there much competition like are there heaps of tradies out there is it just out of suburbs or it's probably not like where i live now there's not yeah. a heap of there's not a heap of trades out there yeah but, like pe- people are obviously like traveling out there yeah, yeah for sure um there probably hasn't been a lot of competition up until maybe the last yeah. t- six months do you reckon it's where it's like it's definitely shifted oh yeah yeah it's definitely shifted now like it's really slowed down yeah and i guess it's probably a little bit more competitive yeah but like say the type of builds that i want to do like you know high performance passive house yeah. there's basically been one guy in that area mm. and like he he's the fucking i've lost probably three projects to him oh well yeah like Just, I, I don't want to competitively tender yeah um but yeah i've had like job leads come in and they're sort of um and an R in between like two builders. Yeah. And yeah. Cause like outside of a few builders following me on Instagram, like mm. I'm unknown to most a lot people. Of, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas this guy's obviously got a track record of doing passive houses yeah, in the yeah, massive yeah. ranges. Do you think he's, you're just losing those purely on price or is he maybe putting no, together no. a bit of he's uh, like he was definitely more expensive than what I would have been. He, he just, just has the reputation. Yeah, fair enough. You know, yeah. he's got the track record, yeah, you know. And I guess that's probably like one thing that's been holding me back. Yeah, a little bit with. It's know. getting the opportunity to do a couple, build up your word of mouth reputation. Yeah, and then so like the Castle Main job that I'm doing now. Yeah, I was like the third choice builder. Oh shit. Yeah. So Actually. everyone else said no. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you still put in a tender price for that fixed price? Yeah. Well, like at what? Yeah. So I, you know, priced it. Yeah. And signed a fixed price price contract, but yeah. yeah, they originally wanted this other builder to do it. Too busy. And then he said. Nah, I, yeah, I think at the time like, it was probably too far away yeah, from, yeah. you know, where the hub of all yeah. his work was. Yeah. Um, and then they hit up another mate of mine because the owner's an architect. Yeah. So he was working for another architecture firm that was doing a project with another builder mate of mine. Yeah, yeah. And so they asked him, oh, do you want to do it? And he's <laughs> like, nah, but, you know, Brad will probably do it. Sick. And then, yeah, so met him and... Yeah, he was. They were probably like a little bit like, "Oh, who is this guy?" Yeah, yeah. Because like, obviously, we haven't heard of him before. Yeah, like I'm sort of flying under the radar a little bit, and then it yeah. helped that like I did my parents' house. Yeah. Um, and so I had, yeah, because like a lot of the other stuff that I've done, is just such random. It's not really like profile work, eh? Nah, like you it's can't like just random shit. You yeah. Know? And like heaps of the cool, like the coolest shit that I was doing was like before I had an Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like I don't have much documentation of. <laughs> Of doing it, I just was like just a bogan tradie doing shit that was <laughs> rad, and I was like, cool. I never thought to like take photos or document it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or so whatever. who's doing all that now? Who runs Instagram now? Do you just take? Yeah, still myself. You just take snaps on a what are you running? iPhone fourteen or something? Yeah, I've got, yeah, I got an iPhone. It's 15, pretty decent you know? camera yeah. on that, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And then you just upload everything yourself. Yeah. Fuck it. How many job? Would you get job inquiries through there, or is it more just for other builders following you? Or do you? Yeah, get... it's just like. Just like other builders, yeah, you know. And then like I had an open house at the Castle Main job. Me. Just like opened it to builders exclusively. Sweet. So we just had like a whole day there because I get like heaps of questions because I like really show like the nitty gritty on my stories. Yeah, that's good, man. And like all the stuff that, yeah, when I started wanting to get into that, I was relying heavily on content that was yeah. like US based or, you know, Europe based or whatever. Yeah. Um, even like you guys in NZ are yeah. a bit, bit ahead of us in, you yeah. know, a lot of aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I literally just, I mean, like I started my Instagram back just yeah, random yeah. carpentry tips and shit and then yeah, sort exactly. of like slowly built up. And once people were like, oh, that's handy. I was like, fuck, I'll just share whatever. And people liked it and it just yeah. sort of grew from 
it's grew from there. You know? It's kind of cool, and I feel like I haven't looked into it too deeply, but I feel like um, you're not trying to, I don't know, sell anything or do it. You're just like, this, yeah. is, this is my thing. This is what I do. It like, trips me out, man, because it's just like I literally just post what the fuck I'm up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are like, oh, that's so good, and you know, yeah, whatever. And it's, it's been grouse, like, yeah, out of the, you know, all the builders that came mm. to the open, you know, like some of them are like, oh, we're just starting to think about high performance houses or yeah, you know, yeah. they've never had an opportunity to go and see it in the flesh. Yeah. You know, so it was grouse for them. And then yesterday, one of the builders that came and had a look at it, he's yeah. actually building a hemp crate house for himself. Mm -hmm. So he rang me yesterday, Arvo, and he's like, hey, I'm just going through the, you know, yeah. through this process. Like, you know, is there anything else that, yeah, you know, it's just grouse to be able to help people and yeah. yeah. So, um, Give us the rundown on like traditional housing and passive housing. What's like different about it? What can people like learn if people don't know anything about it? So it's really, I guess like, you know, like I'm not like hardcore like. No, no, no. But you passive, know, you'll know passive more house or whatever. But, um, you know, I guess like essentially in Australia, a yeah. standard house is just like a tent. Yeah. You know, a drafty, that's basically, yeah, and yeah, it's basically it's how they're how yeah. they're built. You know, not not very durable. Yeah, you know, and then you go to a passive house, or you know, like what we call a high performance house, yeah. or whatever. Um, you know, and we're just word. adding high yeah. performance. I love that word high performance house. Um, it must sound like a fucking rock star, ten thousand a square meter yeah. dollar house. <laughs> it's it like and for some of us, like we've. Uh, like I hate the term high performance. It's just yeah. we're just building houses that perform how they fucking should perform. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, like with the cost fit, of what it costs, it's just fit for purpose. Yeah, you know. Whereas, yeah, like you know, a lot of the housing stock now in Australia will be lucky to last fifteen years. Yeah, you know, and do, it'll be trashed. Yeah. Do you see like is there a lot of stuff like the high volume stuff? We're not high performance. The other end, high volume group housing. Like, is that are they just going to turn into slums in 10 years or like are they going to fall apart? Or so, some of what you see, like, there's a dude on TikTok actually, the TikTok inspector, uh, and so he just goes around like, and he's like, but he's not even looking hard, yeah. Like, some of the shit that I've seen, you know, before, and I very nearly left the industry as well, like, just yeah. the, the types of jobs that I was doing, yeah, yeah, you know, through my apprenticeship, and you know, with the exception of the odd, like, good job on as a side. Yeah. thing you know like the bulk of the carpentry work that i was doing initially was development work where like they cut every possible corner like the yes. quality is atrocious like and like i was so depressed yeah because like, i love my job like really yeah yeah and like, you want it to doesn't do it feel like going to work it's yeah, like sick. it's honestly just like this is fun <laughs> that's sick man um you know and yeah seeing all that stuff it's like fuck man this is like people's life savings yeah you know and then now, like, as you learn more, it's, you know, like, the health of the occupants of the building, you know, like, these mm. joints are all mouldy, they're all, you know, falling yep. down. People getting sick in them. Yeah, it's, like, cra it's yeah. crazy, you know. So we have a way that we can build, yep. even if it's not passive house, but, you know, there's things that we can, yep. you know, implement in a, in a build, you know, simple shit, like, let's wrap the joint properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're protecting the structure and it's going to be durable. Yeah. You know, What's... allowing a pathway for water to escape yep. or drain away, just like this. The dead yeah. is simple as shit. What's um from like a cost perspective? I don't know if you know too much. Is there a big cost perspective between like a, res a standard residential house and a high performance house? If like, you were comparing like volume, yeah, to you know a, a high performance house, yeah, you're probably getting knocking close to double. Okay, but if you found you know like a good custom builder mm. that's building a, a legitimate quality house, yeah, and then you took that and went to high performance, it's Okay. It'd be nonsense. Not like it wouldn't be a huge amount more. Okay. What like we... I definitely know builders yeah. that are building not high performance houses mm. at a higher square meter rate than what people are building passive houses for. Uh, you I know, see, but yeah. it just, just depends on like the architectural finishes and yeah, for sure. all do that you, sort of stuff. Um, so do you work with like when you get, how many of these passive houses have you built? Do, so this the Castle first... Main one will be my first one. Oh, okay, cool. And then I did a high performance house for my parents. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah. And then I was really trying to get into that space for a while. Yeah. So I had started, you know, for like some of the clients that I had, I was like, listen, but like the, I remember the first one that I like properly wrapped like a high performance house. I was yeah. like, you just pay for the wrap. I'll do the labor for free. <laughs> I just want to do it. Yeah. You know? And yeah, just that, to get it under your portfolio. Like put yeah. it on your portfolio. Yeah, I want to... Under I'll, your belt. Yeah, I want to be able to figure it out, know Me. what's what, you know? So I just sort of like, yeah, copped it on, what, on that one. What's the what's the brand of the moisture barrier that they install? Pro Climber is Pro like Climber. the most... And then what's the most standard common one? 
here. Zoomcraft. Like that. Yeah, Brad, Bradford. Bradford. Zoom. Yeah. What's the cost difference in a roll? Do you ever? Is it like? Pretty sure they're like 180 bucks a roll for a Thermocraft or a bread for yeah. something. Yeah, you'd be you'd be like double the cost probably double to the, go from yeah yeah. Like there's obviously like a huge range, you know. Absolutely, but I just like key yeah. elements. Yeah, roughly if you double. took if you took like the house wrap that they're wrapping a volume house in, and yeah. you went to like the pro climber wrap, you'd probably double the cost. You'd go okay, from cool. like 180 to 360 ish. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. But the labor time is no more. It, if anything, Less. using the better wraps. Is quicker. Yeah, yeah, they don't tear. Yeah, they're stretchy. They're easier to work with. Yeah, the pro climber ones have got like all little like um every hundred mil they've got like a little marking. Yeah, so yeah, if you've yeah. ever got to cut anything, it's like it's just city proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. the one so with the the newer wrap, is there anything like same process when you're wrapping around windows cutting? You just cut in and then you're just window taping same thing. Yeah, well, it's like most people here, so, like if you drive around the suburbs and see a, a you know a volume built like the frame is coming in smashing the frame up, putting the windows in, yeah. legging it, and then a, a, you know, a separate company is coming in to chuck the wrap on, yeah. and they'll just cut around whatever's already there, oh, you know, and, and that's it. So you don't know. do They've wrap. only just started tape and wrap maybe in the last two years. No way. Yeah. I feel like that's where we are quite a far ahead in New Zealand. Yeah. So, like, like obviously, like, New Zealand's, like, you got the whole leaky building syndrome. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to, like, combat now. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> we are just at the point now mm. where we're creating that leaky building oh, syndrome gosh. so it's going to be move over here in 10 to 15 years <laughs> and yeah. there'll be a crisis of yeah 100 100 which is wild because like yeah we're so close to new zealand how have they not figured out the problem? both of us are decades behind yeah europe and the us yeah you know that's insane. I don't look too much into it, man. I just, I mean, I see all the fancy stuff that comes up, like Swedish builds and like all the stuff in the Baltics and that, and it looks insane. I don't know about all the weather type stuff over there. Do you know yeah. much about it, how different it is? Like the products that they use? Yeah, products and processes and weather type. Yeah, some of the products are, are different or whatever, you know, yeah. marginally different, like, but Pro Climb is a German brand. Yeah. You know, so like that's what, yeah. you know, that's where it came from. It's been used Europe, over there you know, already. They started developing that brand sometime in the early 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a few products that are exclusive to the Australian and New Zealand market from Pro Climber, but that's yeah. just because of our UV yes. in Australia and New Zealand because the hole in the ozone layer. Yeah, way worse. And we've got yeah. way harsher UV, so they've developed some products mm. that are a little bit hardier to the UV just yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, uh, other than that, like it's essentially the same product. Yeah. Like most of the, like, if you're a passive house builder in Australia, like, most yeah. of your shit's coming from Europe. Yeah. Like that's where the product's coming from. Are you seeing more, are you t like trying to move more of your marketing and stuff towards Passive House now or are you seeing more inquiries naturally? Uh, um, yeah, like I said, I don't really... I don't Class really, yourself as I it? don't really market myself yeah. at, at, at all. You know, like I don't have a website. You know, like... <laughs> it's <I'm>, awesome, man. <laughs> it's like, probably good because you probably can't get calls from marketing agencies trying to sell you all these SEO packages and that. So. Yeah, no, nah, like I get <laughs> I get the odd like DM on Instagram from yeah. like a company that's like, hey, yeah. you notice you haven't got a website. Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> no, nah, I'm all good, man. I'm booked out for two years. Don't stress. Yeah, like <laughs> it's just me and one other dude. Like yeah. I can only do so many jobs. So, I like being on the job. Yeah. I like doing the work. Yeah, for sure. I actually like had a motorbike accident a couple of years ago, broke both my wrists. Wow. That took me off the tools for a while. I actually thought I was going to be off the tools forever because my left wrist is cooked. Same time. Same time. Yeah, I had a head on dirt bike crash. How the fuck did you brush your teeth? Fucking. But yeah, brushing my teeth was alright. It was really hard to wipe my ass. Yeah. And yeah. my wife was heavily pregnant at the time, so it was like <sighs> brutal. Whammy, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, that I sort sort of like that was a hard period because I was like, oh shit, what am I going to do now? Yeah, man. Um. And I sort of started then, I was like, okay, I've got to transition away and then yeah. like just pump the rehab. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of not too bad. Now I wear I wear a wrist brace just at work brace. if I work yeah, and yeah. I'm just like really conservative yeah. about, you know, I don't like full send it like I Yeah, like yeah I a little bit to. more cautious on the weekends. A little bit more, yeah, a little bit more cautious, you yeah. know, not ripping dirt, dirt bikes around the bush anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so that sort of made me think, oh, yeah, maybe I've got to start marketing myself yeah. a little bit and then, yeah, just naturally... I mean, the body sort of half came back to it, yeah. Half recovered, and yeah, I just sort of go with, go with the flow. Nice, you know. But I definitely have like a minimum standard that I'll build to. Yeah. So I shit can a lot of inquiries like real fast. Yeah, I can like, imagine. I'm like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. If you're not about that, all good. Go I'm to the not next. for you. Yeah. Catch around. Yeah. Here's someone else. Do you have yeah. other builders that you're close with that you'll just prefer 
work too? Inquiries? Um, I, like, there's definitely a heap of builders that I would yeah. recommend. Yeah. But most of the ones that, you know, the inquiries that I'm turning down mm. are like, I don't but, know anyone that's going to want to build this. You're yeah. just going to need to go find some, yeah. you know, armchair builder. Yeah. That, you know, yeah, none of my people that I'm referring to are going to be ideal for you, or you're probably not an ideal client for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like there's not enough uh, information for, I always try and put myself in the, I'm still heavily involved in the building business back in Auckland, and I'm always trying to think like uh, regarding marketing that I'm the opposite from you. I'm like, I'm deep in marketing, but I'm always trying to figure out like husband and wife sitting at home on the couch on Tuesday night, what are they looking for? Like what's going to, what can we put out there for them where they're going to be like, oh, fuck, these guys are good. We trust them. Oh, they know what they're talking about. Oh, cool. This is roughly within our budget. Yeah. I don't know. Do you feel like there's not enough info for people when they're looking for information from builders? Oh, it's really hard. Pricing because trustworthy. There's a lot of really good information out there. Mm. I guess you just got to know where to go to find it. Yeah. So, like, there's a few. There's one Facebook page here in Australia called My Efficient Electric Home. Oh, yeah. And so... That used to be a really good resource for people and it just turned into like keyboard warrior, toxic, uh, like nasty ass yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was a good way because, you know, people would go on there and go like, oh, I'm building a house, you know, and yep. they'd start learning about things that they could potentially Pros do. Pros and cons, what yeah, look potentially out for. do better. It was like most of what ha- happened, like I would prefer that a client comes to me and a designer before pen sit and paper. Yeah. You know, and they, we can sit down, we can have a conversation. Yeah. How much money do you want to spend? What do you want to do? What do you yep. want to achieve? Right, sweet. These are the parameters that we've got to be in to, you yes, know, wait. meet, you know, your desired outcome yep. plus your budget. Yeah, those you are know, and we can sort of steer the project in the right direction. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation, you know, especially coming from like a range of architects where like clients roll in, go, "Hey, I want to do this." Architects maybe don't really have their finger on the pulse in terms of what things are going to cost. Yeah, and then something lands on your desk. Yeah, you know, like I had one pop up, you know not long ago mm. and it was you know client budget two million bucks grouse budget yes yeah, you've it's designed a house that's four million dollars to build yeah man you know it's what i mean and so it's not it's not like it's like oh you know you can reach a value amount and not exceed mm. your budget it's like yeah. you hear about it you know even in the upper upper echelon of builds you know where you're talking yeah. like 10 15 20 million dollar builds yeah where like people are going in going my my budget's 20 mil and hmm. it comes back and it's 30 million because yeah. the design has just gone to crazy. Town. I was just think the process that we have is so backwards when it comes to custom homes yeah. to where you're going through the whole process, you know, yep. planning, you know, documentation, engineering, all yeah, that stuff yeah, yeah, before yeah. you've, I know, you know, people like, you know, I like, I, take your concept drawings to a, QS. A QS and get a ballpark figure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. At least know where you're going before you keep investing money in, yeah. you know, design documentation. Yeah, I mean, what, what would you pay for concepts? Three three or four grand? Yeah, less? To, just like to some, have it drawn? Just for some ballparks, yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah don't probably Probably less. Yeah. And it's like the client could spend that and maybe $1,000 on a QS report, there's four grand for a possible $2 million job. Yeah. Or instead of going, oh, all the way through to working drawings, engineer, you know, yeah. 50K, and then, oh, we need another. But this, this one in particular, they mm. had bulldozed their house <laughs> to rebuild. <laughs> they've just gone full send yeah yeah and now they're like yeah you know and she said to me she's like oh, i thought two million dollars was a good budget that's crazy she, yeah it's a good budget yeah, for yeah. a two million dollar house yeah it's yeah. not a good budget for a four million dollar house yeah just not the one with the architects designed <laughs> yeah you know i feel like the sometimes the architects will just design to what's going to look good on their website or their instagram a, a, a little bit we had that with um with the architect who designed my parents house yeah you know and like my mum psycho <laughs> and i had said to her like you know, make this guy's job as easy as possible. Yeah. Get on Pinterest, you know, whatever. Find some photos. And so she had been to like all the volume builders, got all their floor plans, come in, highlight this, I like this, don't like yeah, that. Nice. Like, man, like, did a heap of work. Back. Yeah. Basically, like, you know, yeah. obviously she would have the drawing capacity of a three year old. Yeah. But yeah. like, that is the fucking she could image. Have, yeah. If yeah. she could have drawn, she could have drawn it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, the first concept that came back, I was like, <laughs> But you cannot have looked at any of that. <laughs> you <laughs> Completely just, You just can't have, you know, because yeah. he had his style that he wanted to do or whatever, but that should have just been a conversation. Hey, this is a style that I want to design. It's like me. I have the conversation. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to build a shit box. That's real shit for wasting someone's time. Like, wouldn't you just say, hey, yeah. yeah, this is what we do. I can see what you've got here. Not really what we do. Here's a couple of people that might be able to do this. Yeah. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. But I feel yeah. like lots of people don't want to say no. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, oh, you know? I need money yeah. or I need work. But then same, like you know, I've seen it. You know, like I had one project where we spent the best part of two years, you know, through design development, all that yep. sort of stuff. And yeah, here's the recipe to build mm. a house for your budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, forget about it. I want to do this, 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 this. Yeah. You know, and then you know the clients are, are steering it. Mm despite you know whatever advice you give you know and then they fall in love with that yeah and then it's like what what do you pick out now yeah exactly so now like that's made me now like i really just want to find the right clients yeah you know and you know i'm a bit more aware now of like what potential red flags there would be yeah and if people aren't interested in yeah investing in you know Hey, if you don't if you don't believe my pricing, yeah, let's yeah, let's chat to you know get a QS. third party QS. Someone go outside. ring another builder. I don't. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I, I don't care. Um, is there a lot of building going on out where you are? Like, are there a lot of Melbourne money moving out to the suburbs? Like, there's so like where I am. Yeah, is it's crazy because it's like it's either like first time home buyers. Yeah, yeah, or like ridiculous lifestyle properties. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like there's some big coin getting. One splashed or the other. around there, yeah. Yeah, so either on a budget or just going all out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Have you ever, do you have to put together, like obviously you've done a couple builds, have you ever put together like contract stuff, sold prelim estimates, like do you do buyer's commitment fees if someone's semi-keen, like keen to go ahead? Because the big thing I talk yeah. about is not quoting for free. So, yeah. yeah, so I definitely sort of did a bit of like the, pay to play yeah thing for a little bit yeah and yeah. just had had my time wasted and yeah for sure you know for me that was really the only way i was going to learn obviously yeah. people had said to me you have to charge for your time yeah for sure and i was like oh i want to get runs on the board yeah you know, you, I, it's different if you're just trying to get off the ground though like yeah, you've got to do it yeah, yeah yeah whereas now i'm like mm. you know really starting to be <laughs> especially since having a kid yeah i'm like times yeah time's real yeah. important so it's like either pay me or piss off yeah you what's know? your upfront fee uh, to be honest, like, I, yeah, I, I sort of, it's one thing that I've really been mulling over. Yeah. So I did one and I, I was like two and a half grand to go through. Nice. Um, which for that job was probably like on the money. Like, yeah. I mean, if you broke it down to an hourly rate, it probably wasn't much. Yeah. yeah. But like, I certainly didn't do my balls. Yeah. But it's um, a commitment from the client as yeah, well. Yeah. But there's, like, there's one. So like the Castle Main project that yeah. I'm doing now, I didn't charge. Yeah. And like, if I logged my hours, forget beef ridiculous it'd be fucked so you're lucky you got it anyway but yeah yeah like i got yeah. the job you know and that was always a thing and it was just like that process was two years as well from like first meeting to like breaking yeah, ground the- so like the amount that i learned mm. and developed as a person and a builder in two years yeah, yeah was yeah. wild and it's like there's things that i've agreed to on that job that i'll never agree to again <laughs> you know like yeah. the client lives in the shed on yeah. site you know yeah, they're in there yeah, every yeah. day thankfully we get along yeah you know um they used a heap of volunteers for their hempcrete, you know, like <laughs> it's been loosey goosey and like it, it suited yeah. who I was at the time yeah, and yeah, yeah. before, you know, I'd really like let my yep. ass hang out in terms of like potential litigation or yeah, any of that sort of stuff. Away. And now I've had a couple of like, mm. you know, yeah, like one of the, one of the volunteers there threatened to lag me into the VBA and work safe because the stuff that they were doing, like, yeah. you know, as part of the volunteering but was it all under your banner and your health and safety in that somewhat it, it was like you but know if, so it's like excluded from my contract but i'm still the principal contractor yeah your license is going on it yeah it's my sign on the fence full contract with you yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so it's like oh <laughs> that's a gray area man very gray area so yeah. now it's like shit no well i'll never do that again yeah grouse for the clients that they yeah. were able to do it they're stoked with it you mm. know happy days but i'll never ever do it again yeah yeah yeah. but at the time when they asked about it i was like Fuck, I don't sounds care. like a grouse idea yeah yeah but i feel like now over two years you've kind of got probably more professional bit more business savvy yeah Fuck, i don't want to lose my license i don't want to get do you, you don't get sued here but you don't want to get a bloody court case or whatever you know yeah yeah license yeah that's taken it off you. yeah <laughs> yeah and it, like you know like obviously like i you know i had left site and they'd started like modifying the scaffold and all that <laughs> sort of shit <laughs> So, and I just was like, well, I can't control what people do when I'm not there. Nah, there's only so much you can. Yeah. yeah. So now it's like just purely from a risk mm. minimization standpoint. I'd be like, I just don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, nah. it's like, 
rolling through trades, you know, like once yeah. you've had a bad experience with a particular trade, mm. you can be like, I'm not going to use them again because yeah, I don't want to have to deal with this and this and this. Yeah. You know, it's the is same it, thing. Is it hard getting subbies out where you are? Yep. Uh, is, are they all country based? Are they coming out from Melbourne? No, nah, so like all my trade base was from when I was working closer into yeah, town. Yeah, so that's how you knew everyone. And all of my trades are people that I was in the trenches with working mm. for other builders. Yeah. That's okay. how I picked them. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'd roll up to a job and go, Fuck yeah, I need you. This lad's doing a good job. Yeah, me. You know, start asking questions. Oh, they know what they're talking about. Yeah, Sweet. Yeah. You're for me. Nice. And then so when I got my builder's license, I was like, right, these are all the trades that I want to use. Yeah. And so I've like picked those, picked that crew yep. on board for the most part. You know, there's been a couple of, you know, Ones that comers don't. and goers or, yeah, yeah, or whatever. Sure. It's, it's obviously, it's hard for me doing a limited amount of projects. Like, yeah. you know, I'm not keeping people busy full True. time. So like revenue for them, they're like, oh fuck, yeah. well I'm only getting one job every six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. You know, so like, um, yeah, I just rely on rolling out the red carpet for them, making Mean. sure that they're coming in, making money, yep. job straightforward, it's yep. well planned, Mean. you know, I keep them up to date with what my schedule is, yep. you know, so it's as it, easy for them as, as possible. It wants to be a breeze for you. Yeah, yeah and that's, meant that they will travel out to where the jobs, the jobs are because for most of them it's you know on an hour or maybe just yeah, it's a long maybe night. just over yeah um and yeah I, like i'll definitely be reluctant to take on projects like that far away yeah again because like you know most people yeah now it's like oh i can yeah, work a... half an hour from home for the same money yeah, yeah exactly why would i move out to or drive yeah, an while, hour, yeah, not get paid to travel yeah spend that time in the car but like the plasterer he ended up st staying in the town yeah um which when he priced it he said to me i'm gonna have to put a bit on for travel fair enough mean all good you know no dramas and then he decided he didn't want to travel he's just gonna you know obviously whatever he had allocated towards driving backs and forwards every day he just put into accommodation yeah just got accommodation they did big days smashed it out yeah fair you know that's just how it is win -win. you just adapt to jobs yeah eh? what's uh do you do you have any rough ideas like what plasters and painters charge you a square meter or is it all just fixed for fixed you don't really know not a clue no nah, fair enough not a clue <laughs> i love knowing rates and, and it's pricing perspective. yeah I, like it's it's hard i've sort of you know like it's wild because i've got two jobs that are so drastically different i've got one yeah. that's a giant rectangle that's like you know, in terms of like plastering and painting and that yeah, sort of yeah. stuff, dead basic. Easy to price, easy to yeah. do, no And then I've got a really, and that's a big house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's 325 square meters. Yeah, it's huge. Then I've got a really small footprint, mm. 110 square meters, yeah. that has every feature going on in it. Fucking curves, you walls, know, rain yeah, ceilings. like the roof on the Castle Main house, mm. the roof plumber sheeted it in a day. <laughs> and it was 500, well, it was 325 meters house. Yeah. And then the, the roof, so the roof was banging up close to 500 square meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other house, they were gone for two and a half weeks <laughs> because it's like up, down valleys, like yeah, all this yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. you know, flashings here, stone Funky. walls there. Funky so it's shit, like, it, yeah. the square meter price would be yeah, goes chalk and rate. cheese. Like it's, yeah. you know, it's just so, Drastically so different. different for a scope of work. Yeah, and then same like the timber floor, like Castle Main, like I think I paid somewhere around 40 bucks a square meter to have the timber floor laid. Yeah. The Little River project, mm. it's like trenched in under the stone wall. Yeah. I've got a teardrop fireplace half that uh, it's like routed out so yeah. the fireplace half drops. Labor time, man. Yeah, and then I've got, um, I've got joinery in there that's got a concealed door into an ensuite. Yeah. So like you've got that transition from like timber to... Yeah, so like chalk and cheese. Like so it's like yeah. I really have to price a lot of aspects of each job yeah. individually. Yeah, you know? for sure. Same like wrapping the, you know, wrapping them. It's like high performance house or standard house. Yeah. Oh, but like you know the Castle Main house, one big rectangle. Like you wrap yeah. that piece of piece. Yeah. Like yeah. straight run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy. One roll, roll it all the way down. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, how many estimates a year are you throwing out on jobs? Maybe two. Yeah, you're a small, smaller guy. Yeah. Two guys, man. Yeah. That's the dream though. Yeah. Don't have to work too hard. Lifestyle. Yeah, and that's why I like that sort of getting involved early because mm. it makes the process super easy for me because like as it's gone through like design development, I'm adding in the line items like yep. bit by bit. I'm not under this pressure to be like, right, get this, you know, number yeah. locked in. Yeah. You know, yeah. like obviously if you're the sort of builder that's tendering and, you know, here's the tender set, we've sent it to five architects, you've got 20 days to get your price in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, like I'm not doing any of that. I, yeah, stuff. I feel like you're not really in the competitive realm, which is when so many. I just think that can go wrong for so many people. Dropping yeah. prices, trying to make stuff. I just think it's yeah. And I just know for me, like mentally, I can't do it. Yeah. Not like I'm happy to be competitive. Yeah. But like I'm going to compete on quality. Yeah, hundred percent. And if I have to drop my quality to drop price, yeah. like I know, I hundred percent. Like either of my two, uh, one builds only small, but like yeah, the other yeah. one. I could have wiped 100k off it like that, <laughs> yeah. easily. Yeah, I could have used a shit of tiler, or a shit of plaster, or a shit yeah, of painter. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, you know, scope around a, here cheaper. A worse, a worse plumber. Yeah, you know, like my plumber does the entire plumbing scope. Yeah, everything. Yeah, you know, downpipes, gutters, drainage. And plumbing, you should so. see it. Yeah, you know, like I've got like all the gutter clips on the spouting, yeah. and then it's got suspended um, PVC pipe below. Yeah, all the clips are perfectly. Sp- Bang on. Perfectly yeah. spaced. Yeah, yeah. Bang on. I'm like, and I don't have to open my mouth. He just knows that, like, yeah, that's you know, what, and that's what he wants to do, you know. And yeah. I see the value in that. Yeah, for sure. So, mate. like, I don't want to not have that on my job. Yeah. And it just be slapped up just to, yeah. you know. Save, fuck, what, thousand bucks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two thousand and it's bucks. wild. Like, sometimes, like, especially at the moment where, you know, I guess it's like slowly turning now, but, you know, we've had such a trade shortage. Yeah. Some of the shit trades are more expensive than the good trades. Yeah, yeah. It's like maybe just because they're not getting reliable work off builders, so they're like, "Fuck, I'm running out of work. I better make as much money as I can." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like some of them, you know, like the Castle Main job, like painting was out of my scope. Yeah. Thankfully, now my painter's painting it, which I'm wrapped about. Yeah, nice. Um, Margin you know, but the yeah. no, nah, I just put them in, referred. I've had I've had a fair few varies on that. Job, yeah, so yeah. I'm like making my money, yeah, and it's like getting to the nitty gritty end, and the client's like conscious of budget, yeah. and I was like, listen, he had a couple of painters come out and price it, and I was like, mm. none of these guys are instilling me with any confidence that they're <laughs> going to give half a fuck, yeah, and you're like ninety percent of the job done, you don't want to, and, and it it's like it's an expensive build, it's yeah. like super nice. I've busted my ass to make it, you yeah, know, good, as close to perfect as I can get it, yeah. Um, I was like, imagine yeah. a painter comes here in here and. Fuck butchers it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, like, it's all uh, feature hempcrete walls. So if yeah. they're not masked yeah. 100% and you get a bit of overspray on there, you're cooked. Yeah, well, like, there's no fix it. We like, got problems. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, the, this this guy came and he had reached out. He'd sent the plans out to, I think he said, 13 painters yeah. locally. 13. 13. One dude came up to oh, price fuck. it. Man, One there's dude. so much value in picking up the phone, eh, if you're a business owner. Like, yeah. honestly, just being able to pick up the oh, phone. It's, like, so this is like straight up. If you send me an Instagram DM, <laughs> a text message, or an email yeah. as your first point of contact for me to do your project, forget yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. If you just send me drawings and say, hey, can you yeah. price this? Pfft. Yeah. Not for me. <laughs> if you're not interested in building a relationship with me, like we're going to be married for 10 years basically yeah. after I build your house. That's it. If, if that's... The you know yep. what you're reducing this relationship to is shooting out an email just a price you know to mm-hmm. wh- whoever you've popped up on Google yeah yeah for sure forget about it yeah yeah don't yeah. know about it yeah I just feel like it's uh I don't know you read so I feel like from a homeowner's perspective there's so much scarcity and who to get for a builder all you read is builder going bust so they're just thinking oh frames are up I'm gonna make a payment fuck he's gone on to the next one yeah or builder can't finish the job or you know. Like it's, uh, it can be pretty ruthless it, experience, yeah, I suppose. It's just crazy. Like, you know, you don't hear, say you're going to buy a car, mm. you know, people are like, oh, you, you drive uh, your Ford Ranger. What do you think of it? You know, <laughs> let's get on the Ford Ranger's owner's yeah. club Facebook page and like read all the reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my missus won't go to a cafe without like reading, going on their Instagrams, who's tagged their posts, who's been there, <laughs> what does the shit like. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, then yeah. people with a house go like, yeah. Oh, Bob Smith Builder, yeah. that'll do. He's good to go. Like, he picked up the phone. We'll give him half a million to a million bucks. That's wild. Yeah, it's that's wild. Crazy. How are people not putting, mm. you know, and it's the same, like, you know, yeah. how did you pick that designer? Mm. Oh, t- their office is at the end of my street. Yeah. yeah. Like, convenient. It's the yeah. most money you're ever going to spend. It is crazy, yeah. You know, yeah. and think about the thought that people put into, like, where am I going to send my kids to childcare? What yeah, school are they going to? Yeah, yeah. You know, all, all these different things but then with building it's like yeah oh yep yeah, that you know the biggest purchase they'll ever make yeah, yeah and it's, it's like i hate like i'll only take like trade recommendations off like has to be someone i know yeah that's recommended someone that they work with yeah yes yeah, you know and i'll be like sweet no yeah. dramas 
But you see all the time, you know, people just jump on Facebook and go, hey, can anyone recommend uh, whatever? <laughs> and yeah. it's like, yeah, here's, you know. John Smith. Yeah, John Smith plumber. <laughs> yeah, or who yeah, commented yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, Fuck you know, his wife know. or his daughter yeah, or yeah, yeah. his mate. Yeah, yeah, there's like no liability that they did a good job. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty impressive on your end, man. No website, no Google reviews, nothing. People can't go on the internet. But I suppose, like you said, a job you're on, you'll be on there for a year. Yeah. You can get word of mouth stuff up for a year, line up one job, boom, you're all good, you know? Yeah. Versus, I mean, the yeah, when I when we first got into QSing, I was real concerned about that. And a mentor guy said to me, he's like, you are going to get, you will get people come back to you and pull you apart to shreds. And I was just like, every time we get a review or a positive email, put it on social media and save it on the highlights. Yeah. Save as many fucking positive reviews as we can. Yeah. My game's probably a bit different than yours. We're sort of going more for volume. I only We only hire ex-builders because I don't want that university. I want to be able yeah. to talk lingo, like show the lingo, but... Yeah, I mean, if you're, I mean, for you, if you're a builder of building one or two nice houses a year, man, fuck, that's the dream. You don't have to compete for work. You're not really competing on price. Yeah, work for a dream client. It's fucking easy, eh? It's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I reckon. hopefully it just keeps smooth sailing, eh? Yeah. Do you see it staying busy for the next couple of years? Um, it's hard to tell. I know. It's yeah, it's hard to tell. Like. You know, I I sort of thought like the tail end of last year, I was starting to stress. I was like, oh, nothing's really like popping up. And then like as soon as January hit, I reckon I've had three, four inquiries. Nice. Now like just. This month. Yeah, just this, yeah, just this month. Like a couple of them obviously like time, time waster. Yeah, for sure. You know, like not, not for me, um, you know, but yeah, I had sort of decided that I was going to take a bit of a sabbatical this year and. You know, just chill out. Like I said, I've got a client who's got so many jobs here, there, and everywhere that I can just do those, and that's enough to. Yeah, yeah. like he's got a sick boat out of a James Bond film that he wants to like restore. It's got all timber seats in it. So I was like, I can rip into that. Like whatever. Like I'm happy to just do. That's so cool, way. Eh? Happy to just do whatever. Yeah. Um, I haven't really had a break. Yeah. Without something like rolling over. Yeah. Ever since I, you know, went out on my own. Yeah. You know, every holiday we've been on, it's like got a rush back. Get back you know, to work, come back start to this job. Shit, you know, so yeah. I was sort of like, yeah, you know, I really want to, you know, just oh. take a bit of. You just had a child, bro. Lifestyle is important. You got to yeah. like be there and do stuff. Yeah, that's it? it. You know, like my wife, she's sort of getting ready to want to go back to, go back to work herself for her own. Yeah, you know, so it's like, oh, here's a good time to for you to hang out, spend some time with the family before she goes back to work, and Mate. you know, kid goes to childcare or whatever. And, yeah, exactly. But yeah, like if the, you know, if the right job pops up. Yeah, you know, but yeah, I've just always been, you know, like I'm happy to do anything, you know, like yeah. During COVID, like my old boss, now he builds custom caravans. Yeah, and um, during COVID, during that all the became massive, eh? Yeah, caravans yeah, boom, and, day. and van conversions and stuff. Yeah, went wild. That's nuts. But that's what he does. And then like during the COVID lockdowns, I was like, Fuck, I can't go to work. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not sitting around fucking bored. Nah, fuck that. I went and built caravans. No shit. Yeah, I was like, sweet. I was like, <laughs> I'll come. I'll come chop you out. We'll build vans. Yeah, yeah. You know, I spent two weeks up there, like during one of the COVID lockdowns, just like building vans. Is it still busy now? He, yeah, he's killing it. He's oh, cr- he's crushing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so good. Um, you know, so yeah, for me, I've always enjoyed doing random different things. Yeah, yeah and because yeah. I'm happy to do random different things, I'm, yeah, I'm probably never going to be able to work nah. no matter how shitful it goes yeah and a lot of people i don't know i've definitely know some people have a ego around they won't do anything less than x or they won't do anything less than that you know yeah i mean i won't do anything less than what's going to pay my mortgage and put food (laughs) on the table but that's a non-negotiable outside of that i'm like oh yeah yeah, like if i've got a bit of you know bit of time actually also love you know uh, and this is like last like tailing the last year got really hard for me because i love going and working with other builders and chopping them out and like because i only build you know, one or two a year. Yeah. I'm only going to get exposed to so many things. Yeah. But then when I've got downtime, it's like, I can go chop out, you yeah. know, Matt or, you know, yeah. other builders that I know yeah, for in sure. the area. And it's like, fuck, now I've got this exposure to yeah. this cool shit that they're doing on this job that I might not ever see before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, yeah, when it pops up on something that I've got, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, fucking know. You might be able to link up with them and yeah. build your network, eh? Hey? Well, yeah. that's what I'm enjoying about the um, podcast thing. Like, I didn't, I had no idea that you built random shit fucking now out of Melbourne. And then it's like, you can use Instagram to promote that and I reckon it's cool. Yeah. I love it, eh? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so no complaints, man. It's a crazy, 
it's a crazy industry, the building industry. Like, yeah. I've got a real good mate of mine who's in Earthworks. Yeah. And we chat shop, you know, he's obviously like business is business. Yeah. You know, you, we all have the same Got to make money, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's always like, man, I've reached out to other guys in his industry because mm. obviously like certain things are yeah. industry specific. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, no one wants a bar of networking or, yeah. you know, there's no brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, Whereas yeah. like, I mean, I don't know what it's like ever. But I went to Queenstown yeah. over uh, Christmas. yeah. yeah. Hung out with a builder over there. Me. Just missed him on Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, like we had already Sick. like been chatting on Instagram. And I was, cool, like, I was like, hey, bro, I'm going to be in Queenstown. Let's grab yeah. a beer. He's like, yep, sweet. Similar interests, same background. Yeah. It's cool, like. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like about it the most, eh? It's awesome. Yeah. Sweet, man. Thank you very much for coming in, bro. Too easy, mate. Much appreciated. Good to shoot the shit. Thank Cheers. you. Legend.